Hi, Amedeo Beretta here and due to a conspiracy of factors it's been a while since my last video. One of my laptop fans broke and it took forever to receive a replacement. On the other hand, River Tales, the game I'm animating on, is launching a Kickstarter, link in description. So I was pretty busy delivering yet another cinematic for the game. And parallel to that I'm supporting a bunch of students on a new short movie, so I was pretty busy indeed. Finally, I had reorganized my availability for students and animators who are asking for one-to-one -one classes. You can now book one hour slots via my website, find the link in the description below. As for the subject of today, gimbal locks and weird rotation are still a part of an animator's life. In this video we are going to see a few tips that will help you solve gimbal lock issues, weird interpolations, as well as one that will allow you to convert rotate order while keeping both your keys and your animation intact, which I think is quite a time saver. If you are interested just follow along. I hope you'll find it useful. So let's say you've blocked out your character to hug somebody. The arms are opening up parallel to the floor and that's the action you need. You have the two key poses and you expect a nice painless transition between the two. Except when you scrub through the timeline you see that one of the arms is rotating in a crazy way and the other one is working. Truth be told, although these two keyframes seem the same, in reality I used a different technique from one side and the other. Let's start by having a look at the left hand side and see what happens there. You see that the two key poses imply a very nice and simple transition parallel to the floor, but then when I see the interpolation the arm first goes down and then moves up again to reach the pose. This issue you're witnessing here is the consequence of what we normally call in the jargon a gimbal lock and it's the result of what's usually called Euler rotations. Often even more experienced animators struggle with this problem. So let's have a look at solutions. Typically the first solution that one tries is to select the curves in the graph editor, go curves and then Euler filter. In general very often this solves the rotation but you see there are very simple solutions situations in which this doesn't work. Similarly, Animbot itself has an automatic Euler filter that should help with this, but again that doesn't always work. And these are the most commonly used solutions to this problem. However, if you humor me until the end of this video, I will show you a few techniques that you can employ to solve your rotation issues without even having to worry too much. It's worth noting that you will encounter this issue on any software that uses Euler rotations. So when you rotate an item in a 3D software you see that the gizmo is always aligned to the item you are rotating. This is very convenient for the human operator that is us of course because it gives an easy to interpret representation of the motion. However, any 3D software will need to measure this rotation through arbitrary values. It needs to know that there is a starting point in which your values are zero and that if you give certain values to the channels you get a certain pose. And that pose is going to be the same in any scene made with the same software. To do that a rotation hierarchy is actually established in the software. So in Maya for instance if you hold down the E button like echo and left mouse button a pie menu pops open and you will see that in this case I'm using what's called object axis to rotate my control controls. In practice however we want to use gimbal. This is the true representation of the axis and you will see that if I rotate the arm using gimbal axis when I operate certain axes the gizmo stays oriented like the item I'm rotating but when I operate other axes then the gizmo loses alignment and you see now you find yourself in this situation where it doesn't seem to make sense. That's because there is something called rotation order that you will find into the attribute editor or your selected item. An easy way to interpret the rotation order is that the weakest axis is always placed first and the strongest one is always placed last. So for instance in this case I expect Z to move Y and X and Y to move X. Let's have a look and see if it's true. Z is supposed to move both axes, you see, and it does, and Y is supposed to move X. X doesn't move anything but the control underneath. Poor little guy. No power there. By reading the rotation order in conjunction with the rotation values, 3D software are able to establish poses that can be replicated. However, there are some poses in which you see that due to the rotation order, 
two axes end up being coincident and as a result you do lose the ability to rotate an item on a given axis. In other terms, imagine that you have a plane that you need to animate and you will need three axes to control the plane. These axes will be roll, pitch and yo. In a default rotation order, the Z axis is the roll and it is the dominant axis. That means that when you rotate the Z axis, every other axis follows. Then the Y axis, the yo one, will have priority over X, the pitch axis and X will control the actual plane. Now, after little maneuvering, you may find yourself in a situation where the X and Z axes are now coincident, which means you are in a gimbal lock, meaning that you lost the ability to rotate the plane. In this case, you can no longer yo this plane, and ideally, you would need an additional axis to perform that maneuver or subject yourself to the same crazy interpolation we discussed earlier on. In fact, the loss of control of a yo in this case is a direct consequence of rotation order issues. Rotation order issues are not unknown to riggers and animators to the point that you can easily find online common practices in regard to rotation orders. And you see in here, for instance, we have suggested rotation orders for parts of the body, meaning that as you do your rig, you're not only preparing the machine you will employ to animate the character, but you will also make sure that this machine is already prepared to achieve easy posing and animation. Now, I guess you could just rely on Euler filters and just add keys when you need better rotations. In fact, the Euler filter is particularly useful when you made a bunch of poses that look okay when you look at them in blocking, but then when you check the interpolation, they do crazy stuff, mostly because you usually over rotated them. So it's not necessarily a matter of gimbal lock when you use the Euler filter. So for instance, now I would like to fix this interpolation and please notice I position myself on a keyframe, select the curves, go curves, Euler filter, and the pose stays exactly the same. However, the interpolation is now a lot better. So the Euler filter is indeed useful in many situations. It's just not the solution to all problems. Similarly, if you use Animbot, you can apply the smart Euler filter and that you see will sort out the rotation as well. It can also be automatically applied to the whole timeline as you work. But there are, however, workflows that instead of trying to find the solution to this specific problem, give you an elegant workaround. One solution, for instance, is to employ additional controls. So if you look at Rocket Girl Rig, you will find that the FK arm has two controls. One, which is the one I used for the left arm, Another one that is called, not so incidentally, a gimbal control. Now the idea is that if you have complex rotation to make and you don't want to have problems with interpolation, you could simply start by placing the additional gimbal control in such a way as to favor the rotation of the sub-control so that the sub-control, if you look at the gimbal axis, will have one clear single axis leading to the next pose and the interpolation will be quick and clean. That is one solution. However, having to switch between several controls mid animation may be a little bit tricky sometimes, but still this works as a solution. Another solution is to plan your animation ahead, which you should be doing anyway, if you ask me, and then go into the attribute editor of your controls and in there select a rotation order that you think it's a better fit for your animation. However, one of the issues with this approach is that the rotation values that you have in your software represents a pose based on the rotation order which is currently selected. So if you already have existing rotation keys and you change the rotation order based on the software, you may have a different pose. You see in here the pose snapped to a different position. So needless to say, this is a solution that works best when done at the beginning of a shot, not midway through a shot, to the point in which some rigs already offer the ability to change the rotation order straight onto the control. However, in most cases, the rotation order switch you have in your control is no different than the one you have in the attribute editor. In fact, if I change it here in the attribute editor, you see it will change it there in the channel box. So this switch is just the same thing put in there on the control to make it faster for you to find it. But again, it sort of implies you should be choosing your rotation order at the beginning of the shot. I am somebody who doesn't quite like commitments. And in that spirit, I much like workflows that give me the ability to change my approach based on the evolving circumstances. Like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot.
and I guess that if you poured water into the rotation order box, it would probably become a rotation order conversion workflow for which rather than finding a static rotation order, you just switch between rotation orders, converting the animation as you go. Enter the picture, Morgan Loomis's convert rotation order script that you can find for free on his webpage. You will find the link in the description below. So let's say you're done your blocking and it's a basic head turn, you see. The two poses seem to suggest I will get a very straightforward rotation down without much of an arc in there. Instead, if I scrub through the timeline, you see that there is plenty of rotation there, which is not what I really need to have. And that's because the gimbal axes you see are in a lock by default. I have no longer the ability to rotate on one axis there. So the rotation will have to first unroll as we've seen earlier on and then reach the pose. That sucks because as a result, the arcs of your head turn are not what you want. If I grab the control and run Morgan Loomis's script, I can ask the script to evaluate the selection. You see that on this frame, the rotation is 99% gimbaled. I am not really surprised because I designed the example myself. So of course it doesn't work because I wanted it not to work. However, the very good thing about this tool, apart from the fact that it's free and you can't really beat that, can you? Is that it can try and recommend a rotation order that will work with your pose. Mind you, the suggested rotation order changes based on the pose you run the script on. So you will still have to use your brain. However, for instance, once you click and convert the rotation order, you will find out that you will indeed keep the same keys you had at the very beginning, which is a good plus, I would say, and now you get much better rotation. And it doesn't take long to convert the rotation and see which solution works better. In my opinion, this is by far the most versatile solution we have examined so far. And if you work with any software which is using Euler rotations, that's maybe not just Maya, but even Blender and 3D Studio Max, I would recommend recommend that you look for a workflow that lets you convert the animation rather than forcing you to find the perfect rotation order at the beginning of a highly unpredictable animation and then maybe find yourself at a later stage having to fight against the rotation order that you yourself have selected. Of course, this means that now the gimbal axis will be different. You see that every time I do a conversion, of course, the rotation order being different, you will get different rotation axis there. But that doesn't matter too much for as long as they do what you need them to do, does it? And I have to say that flexible conversion workflows, not just the one for rotation order in particular, greatly increased the quality of my life as far as animation is concerned. So let me know in the comments below if you think this workflow could indeed improve your animation life. And whether you already knew about this or if you have alternatives that are even better than this one, because I'm always on the lookout for improvement. I really hope you have found these techniques as useful as I did. Thank you very much for watching the video so far. I just wanted to grasp this opportunity for a little plug for River Tales the Games from Kid Onion Studios. I am animating on this game and they have launched a Kickstarter. If you like co-op games and this project is to your liking, please consider supporting them on kickstarter.com. You will find the link in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.